So say we're live. I will give you a thumbs up. Okay. All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition, this live edition of Innovative Practices, where you're going to get three quick tips and some resources, a couple of resources and a weekly challenge. And we're going to talk about uh, a topic about getting kids to think at a higher level today. I'm your host, Greg Zorbis from Inspired Classroom. Thanks. Thanks, Greg. Good to see you again. Uh, it's cold. We're in Montana. You're in Oregon. And I know we're still cold, cold here, but uh, reaching out to everybody who is out there and hoping you're doing well, staying safe, staying healthy. And thanks for join, joining us. This is an important topic. By the way, I'm Kathleen Dent, uh, the CEO of Inspired Classroom. And this is a super important topic for us here at Inspired Classroom, because what we do uh, is develop projects with our clients, with our organizations, and, and on our own also that are uh, process forward. In other words, thinking about less about the content that we're teaching about, but more about the process that students use, learners use to really get thinking. Um, about it. And we try to map out our projects in ways that mimic or parallel how adults in the world work through problems or come up with new ideas, all of that. Um, today, we're going to talk about Scamper, which is one of my favorite. Um, Greg, why is teaching kids how to think so important in your experience? Well, you know, Kathleen, uh, a colleague and I developed an, an idea when we were when I was teaching up in Alaska for 27 years. Um, we were we were history teachers, high school history teachers, and we really focused on the how and why things happened, as opposed to the the names and dates and and things that realistically nowadays kids have access to and they're on, right at their fingertips. They're carrying it around. They're carrying all that information around, but. But it really, when you start to, to hypothesize about how something or why something happened 2,000 years ago in history, it really makes kids start to think a little bit at a higher level. And we're seeing in today's world where employers certainly want educated people, yes, but they want people who can think. They want kids who, and young adults who can think on their feet and, and be creative and come up with new ideas and, and move forward. So I just think that it, this is a, a really cool topic and it's really something that I, I, I think that we're definitely doing at Inspired Classroom. So yeah, definitely. I, you know, I can agree more with you. And I think sometimes now learning is a little, is quite a bit different than it was when, when back in the day when I was in school, um, because the content is so at everybody's fingertips, you know, you can get facts about the, you know, westward expansion, or you can get facts about um, something in history that happened or some scientific you know, thing that, that is taking place, but you can't always um, take those facts and then do something with them or understand that process by which um, maybe the scientists are working or, or whatever. And to, to help kids practice that, we need frameworks um, to, to use. And it starts as early as kindergarten. Uh, you know, this is a lot of times people think, oh, this is just something that high school students or college students do. But really, if you start think, teaching kids how to think when they're young, then it becomes just second nature to them. So today we're uh, talking particularly about the Scamper framework, which is a framework that I discovered a long time ago <laughs> um, and used in my classroom to teach kids how to think like an inventor is what we said, because the, each letter in Scamper um, has to do with looking at an original idea and then thinking about if, you know, how would I come up with a new invention that would do something similar? So for example, if I don't have a spoon, what can I substitute? That's the S in Scamper. So, um, and, and when you walk through the process with them, they have that framework and then they start to understand how to look around because most new inventions, most new creative ideas are not just out of the blue, right, Greg? I mean, absolutely, absolutely yeah. they're just not. Um, people, you know, have learned how to 
think in the, these ways and be curious and observant in their world. And um, it was funny because I was doing some research for Scamper um, for students, for uh, younger students particularly, and I ran across several corporate training videos, documents where the corporate uh, trainers were teaching their workers how to scamper, you know, how to think creatively because um, it's not something that everyone is comfortable with. So ha have you found that also to be true? Well, absolutely. Um, I, you know, there's a, there's a much, there, there's a, there's much more connectedness between what we're doing in the classroom and what's happening out in the real world. And uh, my, my experience bringing as many professionals into my classroom as I did using, using video, um, having live field trips, having live guest speakers, we found that, um, Number one, like we said last week, how uh, adults are really anxious and they, they really like to get in the classroom and share their what they're doing with kids. But we also find many of the same practices, some of the same things that we're trying to get them to do, like you just said, um, corporate corporations using using creative ideas to get their employees to be thinking and stuff. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there, there's some real connectivity here. Do you have some our three top tips? For yeah. 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 So, so the three top tips, and th these are kind of basic ideas of, to carve out some time for some quick thinking activities and don't worry about right answers. This is, this is something I did in my classroom all the time. I, I, there are no wrong answers, especially when we focus on the how and why questions, because how one student interprets something and how another student interprets something can be completely different and nobody's right or wrong. So that's exactly a, a really good for our number one tip to carve out some time and practice those activities. Uh, tip number two is to emphasize how to think rather than what to think. And again, looking at things and asking those how and why questions instead of what questions. Um, and then number three is to model thinking out loud. And you know, for teachers, if you're using a lot of technology, oftentimes we get stuck on something and, and we don't necessarily, we're, all, we're not necessarily as, apt to just push buttons like kids are that's one way i did it in my classroom is bring the kids in if there's ever any problem solving especially re related to it it seemed to me at least especially related to technology that kids were very engaged in helping think of ways to find solutions and stuff so um i i see that definitely uh by modeling asking kids for help when you right. need help yeah, and I, I think also um, to me, when, when I was in the classroom or when I've worked with teachers um, on things like standards-based grading and, and that type of thing, um, we get so bound up with testing and you know teaching to the test and preparing for the test and, and all of that. And really what the test results are trying to get at is are students growing in their capacity to tackle problems, think about them, and um, make some logical inferences from them? And you know, if we don't, if we all we ever do is just take a test, it's not going to teach them how to think about something. And so, building in some of those opportunities to do things that don't necessarily have a right answer or a score or a grade is so. A, refreshing for both you and the students and so necessary and needed. And then the other thing that I found with kids is um, they think adults always have the answer. And, you know, the researchers that we work with have been excellent models of this because they will come on our virtual events and talk to the students and say, we thought this was going to be what it was. And oh my goodness, we found out something completely different. We don't know. We didn't have the answers and we're still discovering. And so to have that modeling by adults out loud of saying, yeah, we don't always have the answer and we've got to struggle to figure it out. And we've got to stay in the struggle to figure it out. And that's, yeah. what, that's what things like Scamper, you know, are supposed to help kids practice, right? Absolutely. And, you know, 
um, on, on, on top of that, I've heard some of the researchers talk about some of the things they've seen kids do on some of the challenges and some of the projects. And it made them think a little differently about <laughs> a solution that they might have for something that they're, that they're really doing in their job. So I'd love uh, it when uh, that and happens. Again, really, uh, we'll talk a little more about that because we've got some real cool things coming up here at Inspired Classroom that we're going to share with everybody here in a little bit. But right. uh, I think right now, Kathleen, we're going to go to the resources and are you going to share, you want to share your screen? and, yeah. and uh, Betcha. Yeah. So um, we have a lot of scamper resources. And one of the things I wanted to share, let me just do this clunky thing of screen sharing. Uh, this is on our uh, website, inspiredclassroom.com uh, slash scamper. And we actually have a, a mentoric software which we put challenge materials on and you'll have everything that teachers need, everything that the students need. And this is just a fun way to do something with your kids to get them using Scamper and creating uh, a new game. So um, the process walks you through step-by-step step with all of the, the information you need. There's videos to help you like this one, what is Scamper? There's a scenario explanation. This is a video that tells the kids, kind of sets the tone for the whole project. And uh, here on this webpage, you can, uh, you can get started, create an account. And by the way, it's free. So all of the projects that we have on our website are free because our partners pay for them. Scamper in this case is just uh, provided by Inspired Classroom, sponsored by Inspired Classroom. So there's not a cost to uh, schools. And this is something because it's virtual, kids can do if they're remote learning or not remote learning one day, but remote learning the next day because of COVID or whatever's going on. And it's all free. So um, and, and by the way, everyone, Greg is our project manager on those things. And he at, is an absolute past master at getting people up and running and started and uh, using it in their classroom. So that's our number one uh, resource that we'd like to share. The other one is, um, and I will put a link to this in our uh, below in the description, we have a whole document about inspired brainstorming. And that is a way for you to get kids brainstorming in the classroom and, and the activities and ideas are good to do if you're lining up to go to lunch, if you're waiting for the assembly to start, if you're, you know, some of those dead periods of time, the five minutes before the bell rings at the end of the day, there's some ideas that you can use there for just quick getting those brains going, building that cognitive sweat. So take a look at those. Um, it's time for our weekly challenge, but before we get too far, we want to shout out to Deanna, who accepted last week's weekly challenge of finding um, names of guest speakers. And Greg, what did what did she come up with? Remind me. Well, she was looking for uh, uh, maybe to get in her anatomy class involved in a in a surgery, and because there are some resources out there, Kozai is one of them where you're, you can get your students, you can sign up. It costs money, of course, for some of these events, but you can sign up and your kids can participate, your students can participate. I know I watched a live knee surgery with our anatomy teacher uh, up in Alaska a couple of times. So um, pretty cool, pretty cool resource that. So yeah, Deanna is uh, looking into that for her class. Great, great. Um, and then this week's, uh, oh, also, Greg, um, I forgot, uh, tell, tell our viewers about our live event that's coming up February 16th. I'm so excited. We just set it up today. Well, yeah, this is really exciting because, um, you know, you and I were talking a few minutes ago about the, the setup for this. And we've been working with MPG Ranch for a long time now. And they've been doing live, this, this real, real research, real biologists working with, with the students that we've had for for however many years, but they have seven years of research that they're going to share that, that they're going to share some kind of the steps of how this has gone. And, and, you know, last year we had that incredible news with, with the mom, uh, mountain lion that had the six kittens, which is unheard of. And they've got DNA and there's going to be some new, some pretty cool new results. We've heard, we're hearing from, from Joshua at MPG Ranch that he's going to share with the kids on the 16th. So um, there's going to be a link 
for you to sign up to look at that. You can participate live. You can participate on a live stream and just watch and throw questions in the chat. Whatever your class, any of you teachers that are out there listening want to participate in this and see some amazing real life. Um, and we're talking about using hotspots and we're talking about being out there on the ranch. Uh, this live event is going to take place, you know, from the ranch. So a lot of cool stuff happens out there. Oh, um, not this time, but yeah, usually okay. the, the, the trackers are out out in the snow. And uh, also because of COVID, we're going to we're going to back off of being live. But but we will bring, be bringing you live footage that has just been gotten off of the um, game cameras. And it's amazing what they're finding out about these mountain lions. Um, and the thing I want everyone to know is there's six different time slots. So no matter what your schedule is, you can fit in one of those time spots. So um, I will put the link on how to register with that in the description below. Um, and then what's today's challenge, Greg? Well, today's challenge is for you to uh, use the inspired classroom brainstorming suggestions and have a, a lightning round of brainstorming with your students and then email me and share me some ideas. That can, what, what were some of the things that you were brainstorming? Just share some ideas with me about what you were getting your kids to think about. Um, I love it. Really, that's what we're talking about. Getting kids to think creatively. I, I love that. Um, also, if you have any recommendations around the topic or topics you'd like to hear from us about, um, put them in the chat or email Greg at Greg at Inspired Classroom. I think that wraps us up, Greg, right? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Thanks so much for joining us this week. Um, again, email Greg at Greg at Inspired Classroom for help with anything we uh, discussed today or to get started on any of the challenges. We also ask you to sub subscribe to this channel and follow Inspired Classroom. Okay, and follow Inspired Classroom on all of the regular social media platforms. You can also schedule a call with us to discuss any of your pro of our products or programs. And also we have another feature called Mentor Meetup to hear interviews with amazing mentors, not necessarily just education, but in different walks of life. Um, subscribe to our Mentor Meetup podcast on any of your platforms. Again, thank you for joining us. And this has been uh, sponsored by Inspired Classroom. And join us next week for innovative practices to build cognitive sweat. We will be talking about what, Greg? uh boy yeah. you got me i can't i'm not sure if i oh well it's no 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 yeah we're gonna talk about uh uh thinking um active oh, listening. active listening yeah active Sorry. listening for all those events boy, boy we both had a couple of uh <laughs> yeah it's all right it's, it's the end of the, the day afternoon. we had a couple of brain <laughs> slowdowns there i guess but. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. thanks everybody for joining us. We appreciate it so, so very much. Take care and we'll see you next Wednesday at 4 p.m. Mountain on our YouTube channel.